glad you're joining us today. I know this is a little bit strange doing this online. It's different for me. It's different for you. So it's different for everybody. We're all in this together, but we're really excited for you to join with us in worship today. Let me begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Even though we can't gather together physically, we can gather together as your church. We're excited about what you're going to do as we see your power. This has been a, a difficult week. A lot of us have struggled with exactly how to deal with some of the issues we are facing. And there are many people who are struggling with illness and, and other issues, and we, we recognize there's some really difficult things this week. But God, we, we see this as an opportunity to see your power in a brand new way. We're looking forward to what you're going to do. In Jesus' name.
This morning we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to be reading from verses 7 through 9. I don't know about you, but uh, it's been a challenge this week to make sure that you have everything that you need. I, I, there have been runs on the grocery stores and all of those kinds of things. Folks making sure that they have the supplies that they think they will need for the next few weeks. It reminds me of when I try to pack. Whenever I pack for a trip, I always forget something. Now, it's usually not anything that's just tremendously essential. You know, something like a, a toothbrush. Or, or, or sometimes it's something that is essential. Like a toothbrush. Uh, the good news is my, my family never goes anywhere that isn't close to a Walmart. So we can always go to the Walmart. And even though they may not have toilet paper, they've got a great selection of toothbrushes. We're excited that we can usually get whatever we need whenever we get there. Sometimes life though, can seem like we just don't have what we need. That's been the feeling of many this week as we go through what we've been facing, as we try to figure out, do I have everything that my family needs? Do I have everything that my job needs? Do I have everything that my home needs? Do I have everything that, that I need? It can be a real struggle. It's, it's overwhelming just trying to figure out what are all the things that you need. The Corinthian church was facing a, a, a similar kind of situation. It wasn't a virus that was going through their community, but they had something that was just as challenging. They were facing tremendous persecution. They were facing tremendous temptation. And it was creating what they felt like were shortages of what they needed to accomplish the task that God had given them to take the good news of Christ to their community and to their world. But Paul writes them in his letter that we know of as 1 Corinthians to remind them that in Christ we have everything that we need. Here's what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Folks, we can know that in Christ, we have everything that we need. The Bible tells us that God equips the church with exactly what He wants us to have. Exactly what we need. One of the problems facing the Corinthian church was that they had an ongoing debate about spiritual gifts. Apparently, there were some arguments going on about which gift was better, who had what gift, and therefore who had more authority and power in the church. Now, Paul's going to, to write them about spiritual gifts and, and spend a, a fairly extensive time in his letter helping them understand what spiritual gifts really are. But he immediately, right here at the beginning of the letter, puts a stop to that debate. He tells the Corinthians that spiritual gifts are not about authority. They're not about power. Spiritual gifts are about serving Christ. The problem was the Corinthians were looking at spiritual gifts from the wrong perspective. They were looking at spiritual gifts, first of all, as what they had, and second of all, what that meant to them, the Corinthians were, were, were looking at a spiritual gift as something that would help them succeed in life or help them have more strength and more power and authority. And Paul writes, that's not the point of a spiritual gift. The fact of the matter is, every Christian has a spiritual gift and every gift is important and vital to the work of the church. The believers needed to look at spiritual gifts not from their perspective, but from God's perspective. And God had given them exactly what He knew they would need to accomplish the task that He had given them. Again, there in verse 7, Paul writes, Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. That's an audacious statement. For Paul to say, you don't lack anything. He's telling the Corinthian believers that they have everything they need 
to serve the Lord until the day that Jesus Christ returns. So what Paul is writing to the Corinthian believers extended far beyond them. It extends all the way to us today. We, as the church, have exactly what we need. We are not lacking in any spiritual gift. We have exactly what God intends for us to have so that we might accomplish His will. Even in this day when we're doing church online, when we can't physically meet together, and quite honestly, many of us church leaders around the world are wondering, how are we going to do church when we can't physically be together? Well, God has given us exactly what we need to accomplish ministry right now, even in a situation just as we face today. Imagine what you could do if you had everything on whatever list you might have in your brain about what you need in life. Or put it another way, imagine if you had no excuse not to do something. It's like when your mom caught you when you were a kid and you were on the couch watching cartoons and she came in and said, you know what? If you've got time to watch cartoons, you've got plenty of time to clean your room. And she was right. The fact of the matter is, you did have time to clean your room and you just weren't doing it at that particular moment. Sometimes the church can suffer from that same kind of mentality. We can think we don't have what we need when what the real situation is, we're just not using what we have. We think, you know, I'll start this new ministry just as soon as there's enough people that will come in and help me with it. Or I'll go on a, a mission trip just as soon as I, I get a little bit extra vacation time. Or I'll start sharing my faith just as soon as I finish that class on evangelism. Well, the fact is, you have exactly what you need to do the ministry that God wants you to do right now. And you notice I mentioned some things that, that we're a little bit in a bind of doing right now. We can't do a mission trip right now because of this current situation. We can't start any new ministries right now because of our current situation. You may be thinking, well, see, I can't do that. But yes, you can. The reality is, as we've been thinking through new strategies, new ways that we can do church while we're having to shelter in place and all the other things that our officials are asking us to do, we're recognizing there are some brand new opportunities to reach people we've never reached before. To do ministry with folks we've never been able to touch before. Just our doing what we're doing right now, creating an online worship service, we're going to be able to extend our worship outside of this building where I'm standing right now. This place where very soon we're going to be able to gather back together again. But we need to remember that right now, even when we can't gather, we can do ministry in ways that God has provided us because Christ has given us everything that we need. But Paul doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop simply by saying that, okay, God's given you every spiritual gift that you need, so you have everything that you need for the task. He goes one step farther, and it's a huge step. Not only does God provide us with everything that we need to do the ministries that he wants us to do, God promises that he will be faithful. Verse 8 tells us, He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. If we knew how everything was going to turn out, then it would be much easier to endure some of the twists and turns that life brings. That's been very true during this season that we're facing as we deal with COVID-19. Part of the struggle is we just don't know how this is all going to turn out. 
all kinds of different projections have been made and all kinds of different statements have been made. But, but part of the anxiety, part of the worry is we're all wondering, well, well just how long is this going to last? And, and how is this going to affect our business? How is this going to affect our nation? How is this going to affect our school? We're just not sure how it's all going to turn out. What if we could understand how it was going to turn out? That everything was going to be okay. And not just okay, that God was going to do something really amazing, something really miraculous. It, it's sort of like if you're playing on a, a sports team and, and you know what the end score is going to be. Obviously, the sports team doesn't do that. But if you could, if you could know what the end score was and you knew that your team was going to win, then if half, at halftime you're behind, it really wouldn't bother you that much. Because you would know, hey, I know, we're going to come back, we're going to win this game. So you would go out in the second half and you would play with great confidence because you knew how it was all going to turn out. Or suppose, after we're able to do so, you get a ticket to Hawaii. Well, you'd be willing to endure that coach seat with all those other folks crammed into that airplane because you know where you're going. You know how that flight turns out. We can endure some hardship knowing that our God is in control. Now, I can't tell you how this is going to turn out. I, I don't know the future, and, and we're just kind of dealing with this as it comes. We're, we're riding away, making decisions, and, and trying to be as flexible as we can. I don't know exactly how long we'll be out of our uh, being able to meet physically together. I hope it's not long. But I don't really know. But one thing I do know, God will be faithful. The Corinthian church could understand that. They were facing some really difficult hardships, hardships that were coming at them from without their church. Folks were bringing in persecution. It was a terrible time of tremendous difficulty. They were facing some other difficulties that they had brought on themselves. They made some bad choices, some bad decisions, and they were suffering the consequences from that. But Paul writes to them saying, okay, God's going to deal with all those things, but we know how it's all going to turn out. God will be faithful. He would keep them to the end. Their eternity was secure, and nothing could change that. In fact, he doesn't just say that they're going to just barely make it into heaven and just kind of crawl in there by the skin of their teeth. No, he says they would be blameless. Now, Paul knew this church wasn't perfect. Just read the rest of the letter. He calls them to task on some things that they have done that they shouldn't have done. They had some very tremendous corrective things that they needed to, to do to make things right in their church. But even with all of that, Paul knew the power of Christ was greater even than their mistakes. That in the end, they would find God to be faithful. Nine times in these first nine verses, Paul uses the name of Jesus. He does that because he knew that was where the Corinthians need to place their hope. It's where our hope needs to be also. Technology continues to march on in very important areas. In fact, what we're doing today, we're figuring out this technology. The service that we're doing this morning is going to be pretty simple because we're just kind of figuring this out. We hope to add in some new elements and and make this a very worshipful time for it. As time goes by, we hope to get this better and better. We hope by the time that we're meeting together that we'll be live streaming the services that we'll have uh, in days to come, not just because of some virus, but that we'll be able to continue to be live streaming our services on into however long the Lord allows us to do that. Technology is a great thing. There's all kinds of ways that technology helps us. One of the things that technology helps us is to find things. If you lose your phone, there are amazing apps that you can place on your computer that you can get on that app and just type in there and it will ring your phone. So you can listen for it and find which couch cushion you left it under. And even if you left your phone somewhere outside of your home, there are wonderful apps that you can pull up a map and type in 
some information, and it will show you the exact location of your phone, where it is, right there on that map. Now, it may not show you which couch cushion it's under, but they created other things even for that that have these little tile squares that you can connect to your phone, and then again, you can just use the little app, type the information in, and it will guide you to exactly the location where you can find exactly what you're looking for. As believers, we have the guide to exactly what we're looking for. There's a lot of questions about what we're going through, a lot of questions about how uh, this is all going to be resolved and exactly what this is going to look at, look like. But we know where our hope is found. Sometimes the circumstances around us can look pretty ominous. That's been the case this week. Sometimes the news that we've heard, some of the projections that we've heard, those have seemed tremendously overwhelming. But even if you take all of this virus stuff out of the picture, our world is still an overwhelming place. Sometimes it seems like evil just multiplies. It's everywhere. It seems sometimes that it gets the upper, upper hand. If we base our reactions, our hope, on our circumstances, on our feelings, then we are going to ride a wave that is a roller coaster. We have to remember that our hope is not in our circumstances. Our hope is in the unchanging Lord of all. Our hope is in Jesus. And He will always be faithful. We can live in confidence. Even though we don't know all that tomorrow will bring, we can know that whatever tomorrow brings, our God will be faithful. My prayer for you over these next days is that the hope that we know in Jesus will shine bright in your own life, in your home, in everything that you do, and that you and I and all of us as believers will remember our God is faithful. Heavenly Father, if nothing else, this time has reminded us of how much we need you, how much is out of our control, how much we are completely dependent upon you. God, we thank you that, that we can have full confidence in you that we can know you are in control. So God, we pray, whatever tomorrow may bring, that our hope, our focus, will always be in you. We thank you in Jesus' name.
Obviously, because we're not together, we can't have a formal invitation, but we do want to offer you a virtual invitation. What I mean by that, maybe as we've been reading through God's Word today, God's touched your heart. Perhaps you've wondered, what does it mean to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We want to help you understand what that is. You can find out by simply emailing our church. Our address is nhbc at nationalheights.org. If you'll simply email us and say, yeah, I want to know more about how to receive Jesus. We'll get some information to you. Or maybe there's another decision that, that you're needing to make. Maybe you're saying, you know what, when this is all over, I need a church home. I've been out of church for a while. I, I know I should have been a part of church, but I just haven't been doing that. But, but i got to get that right. As soon as you guys start meeting, I think God wants me to come and be a part of your church. Just email us. We'll put you on our list. We'll send you information about it. Exactly as soon as we know, we will be getting back together and how you can be involved in what God's doing here at National Alliance. Or maybe you have a prayer need that you would like us to pray with you. Please email us and let us know. We, we would be thrilled to, to just be lifting you to the Lord, maybe in a specific area in your life. But whatever it might be, we want you to know we're praying for you. We're here for you. And God is... Thank you for worshiping with us today.